This is the hard part. That one. That ain't good. Crap. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Summers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. I was just about to load up uh, these heifers that we had raised and take them to the Ponderosa, but uh, have a, we got a little delay here. Got a little random morning shower with some strong winds. So I'm gonna wait uh, on this to die down. I've already got the trailer hooked up, which is good. Then I've got to pull it in here, get it backed up when the rain actually stops. So. Well, that was a nice little shower. The rain is finally gone. Hanging out with some of our bulls up here. This is Eleanor's little bull. Never gave him a name or anything like that, but um, he's uh, much bigger than her already. So anyways, uh, but uh, it was nice to get a little bit of rain shower randomly. But uh, now we are going to start feeding uh, these yearlings. We, uh, we hand feed them just getting used to us. It's like that's just what we do. I get them up and then I've got to pin them up, catch them, and then I've got to single them out. So that's kind of where I'm at. And then um, we'll load them up on the trailer and, and get them out. So crap. the first thing I got to do is I got to I gotta get the trailer hooked up. I forgot about that. Oh, no, wait. I did it before it rained. So, but uh, I do have to park it first because one of the reasons why I like to do that first is because... Uh, Go ahead and get it set and backed up because it reduces that stress. You get them in and out and on the trailer, and then you leave. Um, I try not to keep them pinned up as much as, as possible. So when I run them through there, they'll get all stressed out and stuff. So I want them to run straight through into the trailer, and then I shut the trailer door, and then that's it. So we we'll try to make it as smooth as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in here with these ding-dong bulls. We'll back up, and I'll get it ready to go. Yeah, let's do that. You guys ready to load up too? You already ready? What are you doing? Just like your mom. Goofy. We gotta get this one and that one. I've got to, I'm gonna go ahead and feed them because they're used to us feeding them. I gotta shut this gate. They know what we do when we shut the gate. we we'll catch them. Well, hello, good morning. And so I want, this is, they're just now becoming yearlings because it's, they're a year old now, but this is one of the ones we raised. I'm gonna take her on there. She is 11 over to the Ponderosa. So I've gotta get, these ladies caught okay and take them over there and the i'm gonna explain to you why i'm doing this really so that is the goal is to catch them 
usually she's not too bad so she's already in here now both of them are actually in here so i got them separated that wasn't uh, really bad at all um you can tell the texas calves um some of those are texas calves versus um some of mine right here they're just how they were raised different since they were calves and then i got them later on as calves and so uh these guys have been on our program for a while but they know they're they're cornered up but we got to get two of them out and get them loaded up Let's see if we can cut them here push this back this is the hard part they like corners one shouldn't like it though right here easy easy here's the hard part is when you're by yourself is cutting i've got to get these two smaller ones back out here to my right and this one and the bigger one i want them loaded up So, um, yeah, that's where we're at. Got to cut them. Got one cut off. Now I'm down to three. Sorry I didn't film it. It's just hard to film when you're by yourself. See, 145, I like her. She's calm. She's just chilling. Let's see if I can get her and 11 separated. 142 is a little sketchy, but I like this heifer right here. She's pretty calm. That's the way you want her. She's not freaking out, bouncing off the pins. She's doing good. Other two, a little excited. Got him back in the main. God, I guess when it backed up, it slipped that. It'll just scratch a little bit, but uh, I need that smaller calf out of there, unfortunately. So right now I got them caught. I got three of them and there's an extra calf in here, a yearling I didn't want. So this is where we'll have to use the gates. We've got gates right here two different three different compartments um but two different gates that you can use to try to separate them so i'm gonna go to the side and try to separate them and then if i can get that one by itself i can get it to come out this gate right here that was jammed I got her separated. I got 145 and 11 in there. You see, she's not freaking out too bad here. This is 142. I got her separated now. Just gotta open the back gate right here and we'll let her back with the other yearlings. All right, so she's back over there. I'm gonna get these all locked away. 
So these two are perfect in this compartment right here, but you can see how relatively calm they are. And that's the way we like it. We want them to be, we want them to be calm in these trailers or when we work them and whatnot. So, so that's locked. You can see I had a hard time shutting it, but um, I got it on there and they'll just stay in the front here. We'll get all this locked up. We'll let those yearlings back together. We'll be good. I'll put a chain around just in case. Always put a safety chain there. All right, so all these yearlings are reunited again, hanging out together. All right, so that's always a challenge when you're by yourself, but that's part of it. If this was adults, it'd be a lot more difficult and risky but because it's yearlings they're not too feisty so so now we've got those two yearlings that we raised in the trailer we're ready to head to the ponderosa and we're going to let them out with the 21 yearlings that's Haas's group we've got some of the wolverine uh, yearlings in there and the south dakota yearlings as well so we're going to go let them out in there and uh, they've got some new friends to meet and some more ground to graze so let's head to the ponderosa here actually some of them are up here I scared them but uh we're just gonna open this gate and let them out and let them meet their new new family
uh, it's always kind of fun to uh to bring a new animal out to another herd and it's always interesting their behavior is so interesting because as soon as those two came out you saw the the sniffing and smell and just just like kind of reminds me of a dog but you can see how they how they kind of interact with each other and they actually i had a feeling they would run them they would run uh, the two that we raised and brought over here and uh, it kind of gets them excited and they get a some of this energy going and i i love the i love that and uh it's just interesting with these animals uh, when they take somebody into their social network here and to their to their hierarchy system to the pecking order and, and that they already have established and they have for a while you know the, the south dakota calves they had their pecking order established then we brought in the wolverine bison from canada they kind of established their pecking order and then now we're bringing these two in and already right here let me zoom in for you hoss he's getting his smells in and uh he's showing a little like he's like he's a dude he's already got on her once and he's sniffing around and he's doing his thing um just being a boy but uh he's, yeah he's a, he's excited right now but you got you still got a year and then you can get it okay Still got a year, but keep working on it. You've got plenty of ladies at this point and kind of let them acclimate. But I was, I, what I was really wanting to do was see the size difference um, compared to, so here's, here's one of them right here. Um, you see them kind of pushing them and running them a little bit. And, and that's pretty normal. I've seen that several times and they'll, uh, I've seen them where they just run. I'm surprised they didn't just run and run and run for several minutes like I let them in a new pasture but uh those two new ones are trying to they're just trying to graze and just eat grass which is what they want but um they don't have time because they're being ran around <laughs> by these other yearlings but they're all going to get their sniffs and smells in and, and their nice little introduction into the new herd and uh this may go on for a couple hours but they'll settle down and they will kind of let them into the herd and uh this 145 yearling right here uh she's she's one of my favorites she's the one i was talking about earlier she's really calm when we worked her when i got her in the trailer she stayed really calm so that's why we spend time with these animals and that was a perfect example here's the other one right here it says texas 11 but i actually didn't put the wrong tag in her and um that's my fault she's actually not a texas calf she's the one we raised but they'll do this for a little bit and they'll uh they'll settle down after a little while and uh they'll be okay after that so You guys been wondering how our chickens are. They've gotten a lot bigger. They're hanging out, just grazing, doing their thing. They are doing good. And uh, just keep you updated with the chickens. Um, they're getting a little big, so Brooks is not able to um, carry them anymore um in her hands so they've gotten too fast too big too fast for me to even catch so i think brooks is a little frustrated so but uh we may be getting some other critters here around the ponderosa you know you've got a barn you've got there's a couple critters you need so we'll keep you updated with that and maybe we'll be able to get some more animals some more critters here at the ponderosa you got to take care of the place got to keep the barn clean and and whatnot and keep the keep the pest away predators away um, because we have lost some chickens and um, speaking of that I do have to tell you sadly sadly disappointed we did lose the golden nugget it was sad I did find him and uh, we must have a raccoon problem and since then I've set up a trap I have a heart trap but um uh, unfortunately we lost a four or five um, of the chickens the baby chickens and then we lost golden nugget and it was like two or three days back to back and um it's my fault i thought they were big enough to to run loose and whatnot so i started pinning them up in the barn at night but we did lose the golden nugget and he's been outside forever he's been over here for a couple months now and then all of a sudden um something got him and so i've been watching out hopefully we can catch whatever it is but i'm pretty sure it's a raccoon 
so he may have to be relocated after that um, but like i just said we need some critters over here to protect um, the uh, ponderosa barn so something else that i'm going to start doing is i'm going to feature uh, every thursday i'm going to start featuring a uh, snippets of i've been setting out some um, cameras they're basically trail cameras deer deer trail cameras whatever you want to call it i've been setting them out cole my buddy from texas helps me film and, and do that whenever we work the bison he gave me this idea and he actually bought me two cameras two trail he bought me two trail cameras and what uh, i started doing is putting them up in random places uh, i think the first one i had set up at a pond just because it's hot and I'm, i knew they'd be hanging out at the pond but i have caught some interesting behavior and wildlife on these cameras so every thursday i'm going to feature it video and i'll put it right here on the the video just tag it in so if you see that it's going to be the trail camera you'll see the detail in it and the like time and date and all that stuff so um, i'm excited about that i love checking those trail cameras because you never know what you may see on a trail you never know what you may see on a trail camera so stay tuned for that that's going to be in these upcoming videos and uh, I may post it on some of my other social media, Instagram or Facebook as well. Stay tuned for that. So the next question is, is probably what you want to know is, why did I bring those two over here? Well, number one, those are two that I that I've selected out of our 2021 calf crop. As they've grown up, I've been able to kind of pick my favorite ones. Well, those are the two favorites that I picked uh, off of my judgment, off of what I think uh, as far as breeding, the best breeding products out of that 2021 calf crop. Those are the top two that I liked. So I brought them over here so I could let them out, let them in with this group because they're the same age and they're not far off a of size really. You got a little head button going on over here, but I wanted to get them out of more grass. There's more grazing here at, and I'm trying not to overstock uh, Mom and Kevin's place, which it's already overstocked. And that's where we're going to try to slowly bring some over. Not all of them. The Dunbar herd is going to keep uh, a lot there, but we may bring some over. They're going to run now a little bit. You guys like my Martin Treehouse? We'll just kind of follow them along here. But... Uh, so that's kind of the reason is uh, I really want to see how these gals do on grass and, uh, you know, how, how well they do with these um, Wolverine bison and these South Dakota yearlings that I have here. So kind of a little test experiment. And uh, so what I do, what I can do as a producer is these, since these are my top two, I think out of even when you throw the Texas calves in there, I think I had a total of uh, 10 calves or so. And um, so... I get to pick my favorite ones and then we'll decide what we want to do with the others. Not that there's anything wrong with the other ones as far as a breeding program. Um, and if you want to sell them or do you want to keep them, whatever you want to do, every bison producer is different. We can pick the top ones that we think are going to be good for breeding. We can keep them. We can sell them. Um, we could, you never know what the rest of them are going to do that we left over at uh, mom and Kevin's place. So it's just uh, one of those things where I picked those two, brought them over here. We'll raise them at least till they're two because that means they can breed, which will be next summer and see what weight gain they get on grass, hanging out with these guys. Um, obviously in the winter, we'll supplement hay and grain and that stuff. And then uh, we'll make our decision. We can sell them as bread heifers, um, which means they haven't had a calf yet, um, but you can sell them as two-year-old bread heifers. Um, and uh, I could keep them, make cows out of them. Um, so you never know. We'll just see how it goes, but uh, we're just gonna try it and see. So just a little something that we're doing and I hope you guys understand a little bit more why we're doing this. So, um, but anyways, it's really cool when you pull up to see the uh, Big Joe herd, they're up in the front and you see the red dog and it's, uh, it's always fun to see them um, when you pull up to the property. And I know people driving up and down the road uh, like and, and enjoy seeing them as well. So anyways, uh, we're gonna get the trailer back over to mom and Kevin's. I won't drag you along for that. And uh, well, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated with those two. They should just blend in just fine. They should be all good. And um, anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed the video and 
thank you guys for watching and we appreciate it we'll see you guys soon I'm doing this really so that these ladies caught okay